There's the 20,000, it's maxed out. 25,000, it should be at 5,904. So 25, 25, 25,000, 25,000, it's at the 5,904. And then if I go down to the 30,000, 4,851, 30,000, 30,000 is over here. 30,000, 4,851, and so on. So I think I got those plot points hopefully mostly right. So you can get an idea of the visual chart here. All right, so so that's the general idea. Now, if I added, let's go back to the 20,000 where it's maxed out. Let's go back to the 20,000. So it's maxed out, 20,000 credit maxed out at the 6935. And let's add another kid. Why not? Why not at this point? I don't even know. These kids are already driving me crazy. One more is not gonna hurt. All right, so now we got four kids, still head of household, and four kids over here. It's just ridiculous, a madhouse. Only earning 20,000, so I barely got, you know, the money to hold on to these kids. <laughs> uh, but I'm still at the 6935 because you don't get any more benefit from the EIC above that threshold. Now, now if now if they were married, like if I if I go to married, the threshold will change. So you can imagine another curve, but it's not exactly doubling everything because you still have the maximum at the 6935 and you're only having a, a maximum AGI. So you can imagine this whole bell curve basically kind of, or whatever, whatever you want, this curve basically shifting to the right would be kind of, kind of the idea so that, so that the maximum uh, income level you'd get would be here instead of here but the still you have the max here. So you, you can imagine the situation that if you had two people that got married and let's say they had like, like one has two kids and one has one kid. Kids? Kids? Or something like that, then they could be maximizing the credit of 3,733 and 6,164 between the two of them. And if they got married, then they would have like three kids, which would bring the maximum credit up uh, to to here but it but you'd probably end up in a worse situation even then even though you're going up to another tier level on the married level because of the because of the income thresholds but but notice if you had like one had two kids six one six four plus three seven three three and you're maxing it out that would be at the uh nine thousand nine thousand eight ninety seven if you're maximizing these two out and then if you were married and you got three kids, then it would be at the 6935. But it gets even gets worse if, for example, you had you had two people head of household that were maximizing the 6164 times two, 6164 times two, and then you get married, you're losing the benefit from the earned income tax credit of one kid altogether, right? Because you don't get any of that credit. And then if you had two people that had three or more kids, right? If they had three kids, let's say they had more, you know, let's we'll say they both had three kids. You could just say, okay, well, if they get married, do they get a benefit for six kids now? No, it's still capped at three kids. So then you could see that would be a big disincentive, you would think, on the married side of things. So let's just see, let's just kind of get an idea of that. If I was to say, okay, there's three, four kids, three kids doesn't matter. Uh, for the single filer. So let's say we had, let's write it down here. We've got head of household, head of household, three or more, or more kids. And we're gonna say then the income is 20,000. And we said the earned income credit is gonna be 6935, 6935, is that what we said it was? Yeah, and then we said that the refund according to this calculation just the total refund for this example because that includes the child tax credit one is nine five six zero so nine five six nine five six zero okay and then if i multiply that times two i imagined two people filing head of household their income total would be twenty thousand earned income tax credit between the two of them filing separately thirteen eight seventy and their refund between the two of them would be 19,120. So now what if they were married? Married? 
we know the income would go up, doubling it to 40. What happens to the earned income credit and the refund? So let's do that. Let's go back on over and imagine we had two people that are in this scenario with three or more kids and whatnot, and then they got married. And so now we're gonna have six kids. I got four here, but it doesn't matter after three anyway. So let's add six kids, married couple. All right, so hopefully I got it all correct here. So now we got married filing statuses, married filing joint. You got you got Mrs. and Mr. and Mr. and Mr. Anderson. Now we have to have a whole nother statement for our dependents over here because there's too many to fit on the lines they provided. But we got one, two, three, four, five, six kids now. Six kids. And we're going to say, okay, then 40,000 of income because we had two people that had 20,000. So they were maximizing their 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 benefit before from the earned income tax credit at 6935 and the standard deduction doubles like you would normally think you know something would double if married uh the tax rates are adjusted for married but this the credit here is now calculating at the 4036 for the earned income tax credit so 4036 4036 now remember this the maximum tax credit was 6935 that they were both getting before when they had three or more kids but had 20,000 of income because the 40,000 income they the incomes don't double right so you can imagine this curve kind of shifting to the right but it doesn't like doesn't like double so they're not so they're actually getting less than the maximum credit even though they got six kids now and and the 40,000 of income married were which as opposed to 20 and 20 before and so the that comes out to 9661 so 9661 9661 so you can see again you you could come up with some substantial differences between two people filing 40,000 income between the two of them 2020 20 each and the earned income tax credit you know could have a significant difference between if they got if they got married and it's kind of a sad situation that the the the, the allocation of the kids and and whatnot i mean that could be a significant difference on the income could have some influence on you know uh the whole decision making process but it is what it is so you want to be so you want to be aware if like if you're in that kind of situation then you got to think uh, that there's going to be tax, you know, the tax consequences could be kind of significant and you want to make sure you're kind of mapping them out so that, uh, so it's not like a shock uh, if you get married and you're like, hey, wait a second, this came, <laughs> it is a lot less than we would have got as two separate head of household filers. And again, on the higher income side of things, if you don't have those refundable credits, usually getting married is a benefit. It's not disincentivized by the tax code because because the standard deduction actually doubles uh, if, if you got married, which usually the incomes don't exactly double because if on the upper income side of things, because usually one person possibly has more income than the other because they're splitting up the house and whatnot. And then on page number two, the tax rates usually are reflected as you would kind of expect if you had twice as much income so that it doesn't disincentivize a marriage situation. But for some reason, these, well, it's hard to figure all this stuff out, but the refundable tax credits kind of uh, create weird incentives. So that is that. Also remember, of course, that that uh, the other income, such as Schedule C income instead of W-2 income, would also be earned income and, and have a similar function of it increasing and decreasing according to the curve uh, as Schedule C income goes up and down, business income, and other income that's that's more passive income, like uh, investment income, does not have an effect on that curve of income. And if there's too much investment income, you can actually uh, lose the earned income tax credit because if you had a significant amount of interest income and dividend income, that would indicate you got a significant amount of money in the checking account or and or in the uh, in in investments. So you would think you wouldn't need uh, the earned income credit in that case.